Good afternoon. I'm Sherry Larson Heckley from Westmont College, and I'm delighted to be imagining myself coming to you today from the Garden of Contentment on the grounds of the Armstrong Browning Library, where I spent quite a bit of time with passports on my research fellowship. This particular delightful one issued to Robert Browning by the Austrian Embassy in London in 1856 is the one that the Browning family traveled on while they were in the regions we now call Italy. Um, so, well, part of, there are several interesting things about this beautiful little document, fragile, it's about four and a half by two and a half um, inches, and so that you could hold it in the palm of your hand if you so chose to. Um, very delicate, stamped with several visas that suggest the extent of their travel throughout the Italian regions. Some of those stamps are in Italian and then completed manually in Italian. Others are printed in German and then completed manually in Italian. And part of what the stamps themselves remind us is that the Brownings were traveling through this region while it was under Austrian occupation. So they were living in Florence and moving around Italy in a time of international violence. The passport also has no physical description of anyone in it. Um, and it is issued legally to Robert Browning. Robert and Elizabeth talked about the passports they traveled on as theirs and their companion at marriage makes it clear that they imagined this as a shared document that gave them both the right to travel. But British marriage law um, made Elizabeth ineligible for a passport of her own under the principle of coverture at the time the Brownings were married. Elizabeth's identity was covered by her husband. So not only did she not need an independent passport, she didn't have a legal right to one. And this passport describes itself as being issued to Robert Browning and including his wife, a son, and then later in Italy, their maid. Um, and those terms are all there in Italian. I won't subject you to my horrible Italian pronunciation. Um, but the maid also then is included, Lena Annunziata, in this passport. And as we think about what that travel might mean at a point of international travel, it's also important to keep in mind that legally, English tended to imagine themselves having a passport which gave them an authority to travel. Citizens or residents of many other continental regions saw passports as objects of state surveillance. So not as permission to travel, but perhaps as a bar that would keep you from being able to move across an Italian boundary or an international boundary. So in this lovely little document, we have embodied all of these questions about who is authorized to travel and who might be um, officially authorized to travel and still feel more or less confident or might run into a different kind of experience at the border. And those are some of the questions that I look forward to talking with other panelists about in Q&A.